Now let's talk about white balance. The idea of white balance is to make neutral colours such as white and grey appear to be white and grey in a variety of different lighting conditions. These lighting conditions could be inside under tungsten lighting, outside in the shade, or outside in sunlight. But the idea is that by changing the white balance, then something like a sheet of white paper will still appear to be a sheet of white paper and not blue paper or yellow paper. Now, this is a concept that can be sometimes quite difficult to think about because with our eyes, we have a kind of automatic white balance. If I look at this sheet of white paper under these tungsten lights, it appears to be white. In fact, these lights are quite yellow and with film, this would appear to be a yellowish piece of paper. If I take this sheet of paper out into the shade, then it should appear to be slightly blue, but to my eyes, it still appears to be white and to film, it would be slightly blue. If I then take the sheet of paper out into the sunlight, then my eyes still see a white sheet of paper. A digital camera will see it at white and so will daylight film. So automatic white balance is a setting I recommend you use on your cameras. Automatic white balance at AWB is designed to work in a similar way to your eyes in that neutral shades will appear to be neutral in a variety of ambient light conditions. If, however, you look at the back of your camera on the LCD and you see that the white balance of your picture or the colour is different than what you're seeing with your eyes, then I would suggest using a setting other than AWB. Richard, I notice the colour of my photograph is quite different than what I'm seeing with my eyes. OK, that's to do with the white balance that we've got chosen. So that currently you're using an automatic white balance and quite often the automatic white balance does get the white balance correct. So that means that the colours you're seeing with your eyes are the same colours that you see on the camera. However, sometimes, especially when it's clear like it is this morning, and because we've got a bit of altitude here, the white balance doesn't quite work properly. And I'm sure you're seeing that your photograph is a bit bluer than you're seeing with your eyes, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. So what we can do now then is change the white balance to a, a preset. But before we do that, um, because we're shooting raw files, then we can change the white balance quite easily later on in the software. And the same with the JPEG. But with the JPEG, you really want to try and get it right in camera. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to change it to a different preset, and then we'll, we'll see what the results are. Now, because we're in the shade, then the obvious preset to use is the shady preset. Okay. So let's just go and change the white balance now, and then... How's that? Good. Okay, great. So, now, one of the easiest ways to do this is simply go to the white balance settings on the camera and change them until you see the colours that you're seeing with your eyes. Now let's have a look at a series of photographs where I've changed the white balance for the same scene. And we'll look at the changes that we have. In the first example, the camera is set to tungsten. Tungsten lighting is very yellow. Therefore, the camera has added a lot of blue to the picture. As this photograph is not taken under tungsten conditions, the result is a very blue landscape photograph. In the next example, the camera's white balance is set to fluorescent. Fluorescent lights can be very green. Therefore, this photograph has the opposite effect and it looks purple or has a magenta cast to it. In our next example, the camera is set to daylight white balance. As this photograph was taken in the middle of the day, then the colours appear to be correct. The snow looks white and the grey tones appear to be grey. Now the white balance is set to flash. This is very similar to the daylight white balance, but flashlights usually give a slightly bluer look than in the middle of the day. The result here is that this photograph looks a bit more yellow. Now the camera is set to cloudy, sometimes known as overcast. In cloudy conditions, we have a slightly blue look to our pictures. Therefore, the camera has added some yellow to overcome this. So in this case, the picture looks slightly yellow. Finally, the camera is set to shady white balance. 
Shady conditions can be very blue. The cameras put the opposite colour in, in this case yellow, and the photograph looks very warm. In this case it looks a little bit too yellow. So if your automatic white balance is not correct, then think about the conditions in which you're trying to photograph. Maybe you're outside and it's shady. In that case, set your white balance to shade. If you're inside, taking a photograph under tungsten lighting, then simply set the white balance to tungsten and you should find that the colours will start to match what you're seeing with your eyes. But overall, don't really worry about white balance. Having an incorrect white balance can easily be fixed later on in post-processing. The most important things to remember with the photograph are to have a nice composition, it should be in focus and the exposure should be approximately right. Most other settings we can change later on. We'll now talk about important camera settings and the first of these we'll look at is the difference between JPEG files and RAW files. The advantage of a JPEG file is that it is compressed which means that the file is small. Therefore we can get more photographs per memory card and when we take a burst of photographs we can get more pictures in a burst. Another advantage of the JPEG file is that a lot of the processing is done in camera. Therefore if your camera settings are correct you don't need to do very much if any post processing using editing software. However there are some disadvantage JPEGs as well. One of the major disadvantages of a JPEG file is that the file can only support 256 different tones of colour whereas most digital cameras now record over 4000 different tones. A RAW file therefore can have all 4096 different tones but the JPEG only has 256. This isn't important if you're just going to do family photographs, produce small prints and you're using the camera on a day-to-day -day basis. However, if you want to make really large prints and you're dealing in high contrast scenes, then I would advise that you use a RAW file. Also, if you're going to apply to um, many competitions, they now require that you give them a RAW file if your photographs reach the final round. So the advantage of a RAW file is it has a lot more tonal information. And if you get some of the camera settings incorrect, then you can basically reapply the camera settings in post-processing using whatever software that you use. The disadvantage of RAW files is their sheer size. It means that you get fewer photographs per burst unless you have a very fast professional camera. Also, these photographs take up a lot more space on your memory card and you get fewer photographs per memory card. But with the price of memory cards these days, I find that disadvantage is not too great because it's not that much more expensive to buy a second or third memory card. Okay, Leanne, so what we'll talk about now is fill flash. Okay, I don't know anything about that. Okay, so what fill flash is, is it's using the flash outdoors on a day like today to help fill in some of the shadows. Because the problem with photography is that the camera's, what's called dynamic range, is not as good as our eyes. So when you look at me and my face is half in the sun and half in the shade, then the shady part just looks slightly grey. But with the camera, the difference is quite big. So you see a bright face and really dark shadows. So if you're photographing anybody when you go skiing and they're wearing a hat or they're standing in the shade, then their face is going to be really dark under the shadow of the hat. And it just doesn't look right. So a fill flash is using the camera's flash outdoors and between the flash's electronics and the camera's electronics, it's going to calculate the right exposure and then just give you enough light to brighten up the shadows on the face. So let's find a nice contrasty location now and we'll give it a go. Okay. Okay, Leanne, so to do the fill flash, what we need to do is simply pop the flash up. So when you see a high contrast on someone's face, then you simply press the button on the side of the camera, the flash will come up and, and take another picture. Okay. Now with a built-in flash, one thing you have to remember is that the distance you can use it is not very great. So don't stand 15, 20 feet away and expect the fill flash to work, it, it simply won't. And on a bright sunny day, then 
the camera's going to give you quite a small aperture and with a small aperture your flash distance is reduced dramatically okay so try and use a, as wide an aperture as possible and be relatively close to the subject for, the, for this to work okay okay let's try and take a shot then okay So you've got some nice photographs there with the fill flash. What, another area to remember here is that on some cameras we can actually control the flash output. And this is a thing called flash compensation. So if you find that you are using fill flash but the flash has ended up being too bright on the person's face and it looks a bit fake, then you can go and use a flash compensation on the camera and reduce the brightness of the flash and then it blends in better with the background. Mm -hmm. So that's a, always a useful tip as well. Great. Okay? Thanks. Great.